In the impact segment tonight, landmark rulings from the Supreme Court on immigration and affirmative action. In a 4-4 split decision, the Supreme Court basically blocked President Obama's immigration executive orders. The president's plan would have protected millions of illegal immigrants from deportation and given them permits to work legally in the United States. President Obama was visibly angry and even took a thinly veiled shot at Donald Trump. Leaving the broken system the way it is, that, that's not a solution. In fact, that's the real amnesty, pretending we can deport 11 million people or build a wall without spending tens of billions of dollars of taxpayer money uh, is abetting uh, what is uh, really uh, just factually incorrect. We don't have to wall ourselves off from those uh, who may not look like us right now or pray like we do or have a different last name because being an American uh, is about something more than that. The president also blasted Republicans, blaming them for the deadlock and demanding that Senate Republicans allow hearings on Merrick Garland, his Supreme Court nominee. Republicans in Congress currently are willfully preventing the Supreme Court from being fully staffed and functioning as our founders intended. And today's situation underscores the degree to which the court is not able to function the way it's supposed to. Joining us now with reaction from Washington, Ilya Shapiro, a senior fellow at the Cato Institute, and from Dallas, Francisco Hernandez, an immigration attorney. Francisco, that was a fairly sizable loss for President Obama today, and you could see it, you could hear it, and you could see it on his face. He was visibly shaken by it. Well, I, I think it's a loss for all of us. Uh, you know, a 4-4 tie, that doesn't do anything, and the chances of the Supreme Court taking it up again are almost zero. It really just goes back to Congress where it started, and it should have been. Uh, I think it was a rigged vote. I think they just decided to do no harm since we don't have the ninth Supreme Court justice. Wait, we know wait, where Justice wait, Scalia on, would have... Hold on. Uh, you're accusing of the, su the Supreme Court of a rigged vote? I Is think, that what you're saying? Well, we yeah, do realize I th I so, that they, all the, sure. so the audience understands that the, Fifth all the Circuit, time. that the lower court, the Fifth Circuit, said President Obama, no, it's not going to work. We don't want this executive action. They sent they, it up to the Supreme Court where they said, we're going to send it back down, standing by the original lower court decision. Right. Don't, don't, let, don't put a historic precedent in it. Just do, do a 4-4 a four, four tie. Let it go back to the way it was and wait for Congress to do something, which is where it belongs. But it doesn't mean they opined either way. It just means we're missing a Supreme Court justice. Well, it but also means... what are we going to do? It's also we're the still way we in the same the situation the law, we were before. It's also the way the law, law works in the country. Uh, Ilya, uh, immigration, sure immigration. One person, even the president, can't unilaterally change the system. That's, good That's the whole thing. That's the whole thing. This is not a debate about whether immigrants are good or bad or what kind of reform we need. Uh, look, this is correctly in Congress's lap. Uh, Roberto got that exactly right. But instead, President Obama decided to rewrite the law. And that's why we're in this mess. Maybe if he had, at the very beginning, uh, not uh, uh, ignored the separation of powers and other constitutional provisions throughout his entire tenure well. in every area, maybe then Congress would trust him and we could have an actual immigration reform. But again, it what, takes a law to change a law, and the Supreme Court, is act if, if Scalia had been there, they would have struck it down 5-4, so no difference. Yeah, right, exactly. Well, in it, fact, this, this action was taken <laughs> prior to, to Scalia's death, so this, was, well, this wasn't going to win anyway, uh, Francisco. But would have, could have happened, would have happened, didn't happen. The difference is we have eight Supreme Court justices. Now, uh, President George Bush tried it in 2000 with an all-Democrat Congress, with an all-Republican Congress. So this goes all the way back for 16 years. It's not just Obama. Congress needs to act. We both agree on that. Now, whether this was constitutional or not, you know, it you know, doesn't you know matter. We're really still matters. in the same you know, you know mud that we were in before. Francisco, you know what matters? I'm going to give this to Mr. Shapiro. Here's why this matters. We're, we're, we're in the middle of a, a presidential election. Donald Trump, love him or hate him, Republicans have to say, if that were a, a liberal Supreme Court ninth justice there, you may have a different outcome on this five million illegal immigrants in the country. Therefore, even if you don't like a Donald Trump, maybe do you swallow the Trump medicine and vote for him just because you don't want a Supreme Court that, that is far left or leans left for the next, who knows, 20, 30 years? That's not correct analysis. No, Bob, look, look President Shapiro. Obama and Francisco are being disingenuous. You know that even if uh, Merrick Garland had been confirmed in record time, it wouldn't have been soon enough to hear this case or any other case this term.
So this I agree is not, with you. again, you know, we, we can talk about what Congress should or shouldn't do or what it shouldn't have done under Bush or sh should have done under Obama, but the president, as President Obama himself recognized 23 times before he decided to implement the, this particular action, the president cannot rewrite the law by himself, regardless of but, what you think the law should be. Oh. Come on, you're a constitutional scholar. You know for a fact that he vested no right on any of the DACA or DAPA recipients. There was no permanent right, no promise of anything. It was an executive order, and only Congress can give what you call any immigration oh, so, reform. So this means absolutely so nothing at all. I'm not a constitutional all? scholar, no, 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 but no, no, you no. are. Exactly. And let me tell you, this, this, this challenge by Texas and the 26 states was not to prioritizing deportations of drug lords and gangbangers uh, over uh, people who are not violating any law other than not being in the country legally. That is still in place and continues. This is precisely oh, about <laughs> the new benefits and the new temporary rights. And the president can't do that with a stroke of a pen. Francisco. But it wasn't any right. He didn't give any temporary right. And second, we do give deferred action to drug de dealers and drug lords all the time for cooperation. Operation. That's been going on for decades. So don't tell me we don't. We right. do. Now, let's just do some serious immigration reform. Let's go back to Congress one more time. Ugly, good, bad, just enact something. Right, Francisco, you weighed in for a second when I said this is why it's important to have a Republican president going forward. How am I wrong by that assessment? Oh, I agree. I think one, uh, one branch ought to be the opposite party or the other branch. Anytime you have the same party on both sides, you just get stupid things happening. All right. I don't know what that means. But let's move on to the other action that came down today from the Supreme Court. It's Ilya, a constitutional uh, term. Ilya, oh, I, I understand. I, w I want to talk about affirmative action. Yeah. This may have been seen as a win for President Obama, Ilya. Well, it's, it's a win for progressives, and it's a surprise. The conventional wisdom was that Justice Kennedy would join the conservatives and, and rule four to three to strike down the use of race by UT Austin in their admissions program, but he didn't. He joined the liberals, and it was four to three because not just without Scalia, but Justice Kagan was recused. And this is unusual because three years ago, the court, in an opinion by Justice Kennedy, sent it back down to the lower court saying, don't trust what the educational administrators are telling you. And here, three years later, well, the lower court just rubber stamped that ruling. Uh, we have a ruling the other way. Kennedy, mm -hmm. this is the first time that he's ever approved an affirmative action program. He's never closed the door on using race, but he's never actually approved a program so, until so, today. So, Francisco, was this affirmative action ruling also rigged by the Supreme Court? I think it was the right thing. I think the 4-4 the decision was proper. I think it should go back to Congress. But quite frankly, I'm a product of affirmative action. Let's stop being embarrassed about it. It's about providing opportunity. It's not about knocking somebody qualified out of a spot. Otherwise, George Bush president and President Obama would have never gone to Yale or Columbia, right. respectively. Guys, they got in under special programs right. as well. I There's nothing wrong it. with it. Let's not be embarrassed. I got to leave it right there, gentlemen. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry. I ran out of time. Thank you very much, guys. Up next, President Obama.